Yo guys, what is going on? JPS back with another video. And today we're going to be reacting to 10 things you must know about Scottish people. Now, Scottish people, some of the most interesting, intriguing, nice people you've ever met. <laughs> it's a lot, a lot I need to learn about them because there's just... <laughs> You guys know how my experience was with the Scottish people last summer when I was actually in Scotland. I visited Edinburgh, had some mixed interactions with different Scottish people, and I would love to know a bit more about them and what makes them the way they are because everyone knows what a Scottish person's like, but why are that or why are they that way? That's that's the real question. So anyways, hit the like button guys, hit subscribe, and let's get right into it. In today's episode, I'm going to be telling you all about the quirks of Scottish people. Hello guys, how's it going? Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sean, I am a vlogger from Edinburgh in Scotland. Of course. Now listen guys, Scotland has become an increasingly popular place for tourists. There are a lot of people coming from all over the world, which is absolutely amazing. And in fact, there's a lot of people watching my YouTube channel now from everywhere interested in Scotland. And I think that's absolutely incredible, amazing. Thank you so much for joining in. It's really a great honor to have you here. And if you are new to this channel, please do hit the subscribe button. Share these videos with your friends and family. I would really appreciate it. A lot of people have these notions of what they think Scottish people are like. And for those of you who want to come to Scotland, for those of you thinking about it, or for those of you who just want to engage with Scottish people in general, I am putting together this short video for you. This video is going to be a kind of guide as to what Scottish people are like, and that will of course help you when it comes to interacting and dealing with Scottish people. There are a few things about us you should probably know. Just so you can kind of get your way around Scottish people, the social situations you might find yourself in, all that kind of stuff. I have compiled a wee list I definitely should have watched this before I made that trip. <laughs> I definitely... <laughs> um... First thing you should know about Scottish people is that we are very proud. As Scottish people, as a nation, yeah. Scots are extremely proud of who we are, what we are, what we have achieved as a small country. For example, we will tell anybody who will listen about amazing Scots who have ventured the world and invented amazing things and who have changed the whole entire <laughs> world through their way of thinking, through their inventions. And in fact, I think that could be a video in its own right, Scottish inventions. Alexander Graham Bell, John Logie Baird, Alexander Fleming. We're proud of our social makeup. We're proud of the way we are as Scottish people. I think the Scots invented uh, penicillin. I think that was what that picture was. But yeah, hey, shout out to all the Scots watching this video. I don't, I never have meant to get us off on the wrong foot or send any hate to the Scots. You guys know that. So shout out to you guys, just had to say that. So what that means actually is, is we don't take too kindly to people coming and criticizing Scotland and also do not call a kilt a skirt. Never, ever, ever do that. And certainly, please, never, ever, ever call a scotch. And if you remember those things and do not offend us, you should have a bonny wee time in Scotland. But that brings me neatly mm, on to my second really? point. Because Scottish people, despite the fact that we're very proud of Scotland and being Scottish, we are also very, very self-depreciatory. What that means is we like to take the piss out of ourselves. And we'll do that with a lot of frequency. And it doesn't matter in what type of company we're in. And in fact, especially if we're in the company of foreigners, we like to have a joke about ourselves as well. As I say, we might be proud about the good things we've done. We also like to make a lot of jokes about the things we're not so good at. Despite those jokes, we don't often appreciate them from people from elsewhere, especially from certain places. Oh. But nevertheless. Oh. oh, okay. Well, that's the thing, bro. You can't have it one way. If you're going to talk, you got to be able to take it. The English got it down, I think. I can take the piss out of the English. They don't care. Yes, number three, we are a warm and friendly people in Scotland. We are really? very welcoming and <laughs> we are open. We will welcome people into our house as soon as we meet them. We will tell them our life story and we will cook them dinner. People will come up and talk to you, ask you, how are you doing? talk to you most likely, first of all, about the weather. So if you're from a place that's not quite as open and friendly as that, do not be surprised. What? I, I just... When somebody comes up to you in the street and starts speaking to you. People in Glasgow, by the way, are particularly warm and friendly. You'll make a lot of friends in Glasgow just by walking through the streets. Number four, 
we are superstitious. I don't know how many people from around the world know this about Scottish people, but we are highly superstitious. This is something that's in our DNA. We have been known to believe in ghost stories. The Loch Ness Monster. This is superstition. Yeah. We like to believe in the fantasy. And there's actually two very good examples of that. In the Royal Mile in the city centre of Edinburgh, the statue of David Hume, which sits midway up the Royal Mile. A lot of the kind of blue colour on the outside has been rubbed off of one of his feet on his toe. We rub that big toe for good luck. Another Edinburgh Royal Mile superstition is the Heart of Midlothian. Now, the Heart of Midlothian is literally the cobbles on the streets of the Royal Mile have been arranged into a heart shape. This is where a toll booth once stood. That toll booth represents a lot of things for Edinburgh in history. Obviously, it's no longer there, but that's exactly where it was. It was once a tax collection office. You can understand why it was very disliked. But it was also the location of the toll booth prison. And the cells in this jail were said to be absolutely vile. The last place prisoners would have seen before they were executed. Now, people in Edinburgh have this tradition of actually spitting in that hut. If you walk past it, you'll see all the time, several people, every single hour, spitting in it. The spit is also seen as defiance against the authorities and also for good luck. So, as I say, a superstitious punch. And that leads on to number five, because also playing alongside that, Scottish people are very, very good and internationally famous storytellers. We love a story. Yeah. So with all those superstitious ghost stories, Loch Ness, we romanticize about them and we build them out into big, big stories. And throughout history, Scottish people have been well known as storytellers. We've got some of the most famous writers of all times. Think of Robbie Burns. Robbie Burns was basically a storyteller. He did it through poetry, but it's all stories. We love to share our story with the world. We love to get people interested in our history and our country, and we do that through stories. Number six, a lot of people associate Scotland with being an angry bunch of people, right? We are angry Scottish people. I call this a sucker riot. Come on, boys, let's take him to school. Oi, oi. But that stereotype is actually probably misplaced. The thing is about Scottish people is we are passionate and we are very, very emotional. We are very passionate about the things we believe in and we are not afraid to shout our corner. This has been the case throughout Scottish history. We've always had characters. We're probably misrepresented as being aggressive because of that, but we're not aggressive. We are just passionate. And I think that is a beautiful, beautiful thing about us. And number seven on the list. I mean, I, I'm not going to disagree with that. I, I definitely agree that they're very passionate and that that's just different. It's different. So maybe that's why it's misread as anger or hostility sometimes i think there there is this line you cross where it's it kind of it's just a gray area of what really is passion and what is considered warm and welcoming to someone who isn't acquainted with that i don't know i let's see what he says let's, let's finish the list off before i add the fact that we are very expressive people as well yeah so as well as being emotional yeah. and as well as being good storytellers we're also very expressive we're very good at projecting ourselves through voice and through the way we, just our presence we have this way about us as scottish people and it's not just in front of an audience one-on-one -on -one, we're very expressive people we will talk to you in a very open frank and expressive way you know we speak a lot with our hands we will engage people with eye contact. That's very, very important to us Scottish people. Having good eye contact is the measure of honesty. So when you come to Scotland and we are right up in your face and talking to you very directly, just remember it's quite a normal thing in Scotland. And number eight on the list, we are very welcoming to foreigners. Scotland is a very open country and this is something <laughs> I get asked very, very often in the comments section actually. And I know with politics going on in the world right now, the UK obviously voted for Brexit. I think Scotland is pretty unique in the context of the UK is the fact that we are so open and friendly and warm to foreigners and tourists. Well, the fact is most likely you will be very warmly welcomed with open arms. It doesn't matter where you're from, what your background is, you'll be a guest in our country and we will be very proud of that fact. And we will be wanting to show you a great, great time in our country. This is definitely not the truth for everyone, right? Cannot make generalizations, but Scottish people on the whole are welcoming, friendly people. We love tourists. We love people coming to visit our country and to get to know more about us. So come on in, come and have a pint with us in the pub. Which brings me neatly onto the ninth point. Alcohol is definitely the way to our hearts. Really? If you want to get us chatting. I didn't know if that. If you want to know more about Scotland, if you want to just get some conversation with people, go to the pub and have a drink. Scottish people, as a stereotype, <coughs> we are known as the nation of drinkers. We love our beer, we love our whiskey, 
we're very proud of the actual products that we produce in alcohol nowadays, which historically has always been whiskey and beer. But also nowadays we have become very famous at making gin as well. We are a nation of alcohol producers and actually consumers as well. The stereotypes of drinking are actually pretty tr true and accurate. We drink a lot. I am not a very good representation of Scottish people. Whenever I travel around the world, the first thing people say to me is, oh, you're Scottish, you can probably show us how to drink. So I'm plied with alcohol and they find out after two or three drinks that I am not a typical Scotsman and I let the country down. And I have let the country down on several occasions. And that brings me nicely onto the final point. In Scotland, we love a good party. If you like parties too, come to Scotland, go to the bars, go to the clubs, and actually look for Scottish parties as well because we love it. It's where we socialize, it's where we meet friends and family. And I'm not just talking about going to nightclubs and stuff like that. If you come to Scotland, try and make sure you go to a Cayley <laughs> or another Scottish party like that and you'll have a great time. And of course, you will have heard about the world famous Hogmanay Street Party in Edinburgh, which is the New Year's Eve celebrations. People come from all around the world to experience yeah. what Hogmanay is. We're very proud of what Hogmanay is and we want so many people to come and join us and have a drink with us at New Year. I'm really looking forward to this year's one, for example. So, that's it. Consider yourself All right, I got I got I got some things to add about this. So When he was talking about being warm and welcome to tourists and the whole open thing with different politics and stuff, I I can't I can't really fully agree with that. Like the the openness to politics and different people what I experienced was the exact opposite of that. And listen, I'm not chalking it up to the fact that that's like how Scottish people are. I could have met the wrong people. I could have been on the wrong street at the wrong time. Completely, like I was only there for two days. It, it makes sense if that's the case. However, we're, we're not talking about like older Scots and stuff, guys. I'm, I'm 20. Like I wasn't interacting with people who are like above the age of... 30 or 40 really because that's just it, you interact with people around your age so the younger scots just had this complete just philosophy that um, all americans are just ar-15 bearing uh conservative love trump all this stuff like they, they thought that about will and i before we even opened our mouths like they and they just presumed that everyone is like that and it was just like I don't know. I have really, really mixed feelings on people who have these just they, they hold these grudges against an entire group of people on the basis of how some of those people act. When in reality, you're, you're completely closing yourself off to people who you may get along with really well. So that's kind of what I experienced. And I know a lot of you guys who are Scottish were embarrassed and were very angry at that fact that that happened to me because you wanted me to see the Scottish hospitality. So I'm not saying that the Scottish hospitality doesn't exist. I'm simply letting you guys know what happened to me. And you can go rewatch the vlogs. I'm not like sugarcoating this or exaggerating. That is exactly what happened. It's like to the dot. In fact, more than that happened. I, I just can't say it on camera because of how crazy it was. But, uh, yeah, I, I, at the end of the day, I would definitely love to revisit Scotland and give it another try. And I, I'm not saying I didn't have fun when I was in Scotland. I had a ton of fun. That It was mainly the first day that was just really rough. And honestly, I wanted to leave. Like I told Will, I was like, bro, I don't really want to be here anymore. Like this is, this is so bad. It was so unenjoyable. But just something you got to get used to. The cult, like the cultural differences, just the way the Scottish people talk is just insane. It's so different to how Americans talk and a lot of Americans would take some heavy offense to it just because of <laughs> the cursing. The C word is just in every sentence, first of all, but it's just, that's, that's how it is. A lot of people interact in different ways. And like I said, I'm definitely going to revisit Scotland at some point and Glasgow, I think is where I want to go. Glasgow is where I want to go. I've already been to Edinburgh. I've seen a lot of Edinburgh. Maybe could stop by, but I there's not really much of a point. A lot of people told me that Glasgow is where I would have a bit a better time. So that's that's what's on the itinerary next time. Anyways, let me know if there's anything this guy missed. I thought it was a pretty good video, and looking forward to checking more out from this guy's channel.
because I'm pretty sure he moved to America and does his own vlogs of like a Scots perspective on the United States, which is really interesting. And I'm glad he's doing that. But yeah, guys, hit the like button, hit subscribe, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.